Right, so good morning. So my name is Brittany Lassane, and I'm a postdoc at the Hudson Alpha Institute for Biotechnology. And today I'm going to tell you about some work we've been doing um, using RNA sequencing-based cell proliferation um, across uh, several different cancers. Um, so first, I just want to acknowledge the uh, other uh, people who've been working on this project with me. Uh, Ryan, who's actually here today, he's a very talented uh, UAB Hudson Alpha MD-PhD student. Andrew Hardigan, another MD-PhD student who's been helping us out with some of the follow-up wet work. Uh, Laura Palacio and David Gunther, who are um, undergraduate uh, summer students who've been coming and working with us in the summers. Marie Kirby, a senior scientist in the lab, and then my advisor and Ryan's, respectively, Rick Myers and Sarah Cooper. Um, I also want to point out that um, we did a hotel room submission of this work to BioArchive yesterday. So it's available, so you can go check it out. There's more detail about the methods as well as topics that I just don't have time to cover today. Um, so jumping right in, uh, we all know that cell proliferation is fundamental to cancer. And in fact, it's one of the uh, classical hallmarks of cancer. Um, and in fact, the earliest studies um, looking at gene expression in cancer identified proliferative gene expression changes in cancer as being some of the largest and most consistent. So here you're looking at a heat map from one of those early papers looking at gene expression profiles across subgroups of lymphoma. And what I've highlighted for you in the blue box is the proliferative signature. And the authors noted that this signature was the best predictor of adverse outcome. And so this idea of cell proliferation that's important in cancer has um, continued to grow over the last few years with driver genetic events identified with a role in hijacking proliferation machinery, as well as proliferation is the mechanism of action for many cytotoxic chemotherapies. So indeed, cell proliferation is very important in cancer. Um, a few years ago, there was a paper that came out in PLOS Computational Biology by Venet et al. where they identified a cell proliferation metagene. So this is a way to assign a single value uh, that's representative of gene expression across a module of related genes. And so they identified, or they defined, this particular metagene as the median of the top 1% of genes associated with PCNA expression, which is, of course, essential for replication. And so throughout this talk, um, I'm going to refer to this metagene as the proliferative index, or PI. And you can think of this as the relative expression of proliferation-associated genes. And so the conclusions of their paper were that they found that a majority of variation in breast cancer transcriptomes is correlated with proliferation, and they urged caution when inferring mechanism from survival signatures. So we've taken this metagene, and we've applied it a lot um, across several different um, data sources. And um, we've had pretty good success with it in our hands. I'll show you just a quick example here. So what you're looking at here is the proliferation index on the y-axis and each of the GTEx tissues on the x-axis. And what you'll notice is that down here in the left, we have in red these um, lower proliferative index uh, tissues are post-mitotic tissues like skeletal muscle, and these higher um, proliferative of index tissues um, are tissues that are known to have high cell turnover, turnover things like skin. Um, so what we wanted to do was to take this metagene and apply it to phenotypes that we care about. And so what I'm going to share with you today is some work that we've done examining this role of cell proliferation and patient outcomes across TCGA. So you guys just heard um, about the TCGA data set. Um, after we did uh, uh, looked for cancers that had enough data to ask the questions that we wanted, we have 19 cancers with about 6,500 patients um, that I will be using for the rest of this talk. So first, let's take a look at how proliferative index varies across tissues and cancer types. So again, you're looking at the proliferative index on the y-axis, and along the x-axis, we have within each tissue type, in red, the TCGA tumor tissues, in green, adjacent TCGA normal tissues, and in blue, healthy GTEx tissues. And so um, what you'll notice is that the proliferative index varies within and across tumor tissues and is higher in tumor tissue compared to adjacent benign or normal tissue. Um, so this demonstrates that tumor genesis is accompanied by a characteristic increase in proliferation-related gene expression. I think we all kind of expected this. This is a good gut check um, as well. So let's take a look at what um, variation across each transcriptome looks like with relation to the proliferative index. So one way to do that is to do a principal components analysis within each uh, cancer, which is what we've done here. So on the y-axis now, you're looking at the first 25 principal components. And on the x-axis, we have um, each cancer um, represented. So each box is colored by the association between that um, principal component and the um, uh, proliferative index. 
And so um, what you can see is that um, in every single cancer, at least one of the first principal components is strongly correlated with um, the proliferative index. So we, we do see that it's not just the original Venet et al. finding about a large percentage of breast cancer transcriptome being associated with proliferative index, but in fact across all 19 of these cancers. So diving in a little bit deeper to breast cancer, this is the largest data set um, we have um, in TCGA. Um, if we look at the, how the proliferative index uh, changes within or across subtypes of breast cancer, we see that more aggressive subtypes like the basal-like in red have higher proliferative index, and these lower um, or less aggressive subtypes like luminal A and green have a lower proliferative index. If we um, do a principal components analysis and plot PC1 versus PC2 and color the samples by subtypes, we see what we've known in cancer for a while, which is that principal component one does a pretty good job of separating out the different subtypes. And um, so it's not surprising then that if we look at the um, relationship between principal component one and the tumor proliferative index, we see that there's a really strong anti-correlation here. So um, a large proportion of the variance within breast cancer gene expression, um, but that includes subtype delineations, is strongly associated with this cell proliferation. Um, so now let's kind of jump into um, the, the main part of the talk, which is looking at how this proliferative index associates with patient survival across all of these cancers. So what you're looking at here is on the y-axis, we um, have plotted for you the proliferative index association with survival. So these are negative log 10 Cox p values. And on the x-axis, we're looking at the median proliferative index um, within each cancer. So each dot up here is uh, representing a cancer. And so again, these things are strongly anti-correlated. And in fact, we have a um, group of cancers up here in the left corner, um, which I've boxed out in green for you, that have a significant association. The red line is our significance line um, between um, proliferative index and patient survival. And if you'll notice, by looking at the x-axis, these tend to have a lower cell proliferation compared to other cancers. And then we have this orange box where there's a non-significant association. So if we step back for a moment and we say, let's just look within each cancer and um, let's just look and see what genes are um, associated with survival within each cancer. And then let's do um, a pathway analysis and see um, what do we see. So what we find is that um, that analysis within each cancer in the green box, we largely see there is um, PI survival associated cancers. We see proliferation related go terms. And for cancers in the orange box, each cancer is kind of its own special little snowflake. And you see a depletion of proliferation related terms. And instead you see enrichment for various terms like cell metabolism immune response, et cetera. Um, so again, taking that matrix where we're looking at the association between proliferative index and survival, or I'm sorry, we're looking at just the um, association between um, survival and gene expression level, um, so putting proliferative index aside for a moment, um, we can uh, look for to see if there's a set of common survival genes. So if we look and see for Cox regression, uncorrected p-values less than 0.05 for a gene in roughly half the cancers or more, um, we find 84 genes and surprise, surprise, these are enriched for proliferation related processes. So if we cluster by the Cox regression p-values, which you can see here where um, blue is low and yellow is high, we see um, in the dendrogram that we have two groups of cancers. Um, and these recapitulate what I told you on the previous slide where the cancers in green here are these proliferative informative cancers and the ones in orange are not. Uh, the non-proliferative informative cancers. So um, we looked at all clinical parameters that we could. We don't see anything that um, splits them out except for these are the exact same cancers I showed you on the previous slide where there's an association between um, the uh, survival and proliferative index. Um, so just to recap, because this is an important point, um, we have cancers that are um, proliferative informative and non-proliferative informative, and we've shown you that two different ways. One, um, by an association between the proliferative index and patient survival, and two, by looking for common survival signatures. And so we have these that don't appear, survival does not appear to be linked to cell proliferation, and these where it does. 
So this got us thinking, if we have a set of cancers that seem to have this common set of genes associated with survival, um, can we model it? And so that's what I'm showing you here. Um, we did a lasso multivariate Cox regression of the proliferative and formative cancers in green here. And you can see that we have an area under the curve of 0.85 compared to um, the non PICs in orange or all cancers in blue. And so this was striking, but we wanted to make sure that this wasn't confounded by the fact that we only have seven cancers in the green group and 12 and 19 in the other groups. Is it just because less cancers is easier to model, less heterogeneity? Um, and in fact, the answer is no. So we can randomly pull sets of seven cancers from our set of 19, do the same framework again. Um, and here you can see that our observed AUC is higher than anything else we've seen. And in fact, if you look at the area under the curve um, for any of these random sets, it's strongly correlated with the number of PICs or proliferative form of cancers that went into making the model. And we've done this with other predictive modeling approaches and we get very, very similar results. Um, so the next question uh, that we wanted to ask was, um, it's intuitive that increased rates of cell division, particularly in cancer cells with diminished repair mechanisms, might be expected to correlate with mutation burden. And so um, what we did was we looked at the correlation between proliferative index and somatic mutation burden in tumor exomes both across and within each cancer, and we found a strong correlation. So again, going back to the breast cancer data set as an example, it's our largest data set. Um, what you see here is um, we've plotted that somatic mutation burden against proliferative index, and within the subtypes, we have a significant association. And so if we look for genes that are enriched for proliferative index-associated mutations across cancers, we get your well-established cancer driver hit list, um, P53, RB1, PI3 kinase. Beyond that, um, apart from these driver genes, mutations that are associated with proliferation were tumor-specific. So again, in breast cancer, um, we saw that RELIN was among the top genes in breast cancer ranked by protein-altering mutations associated with increased proliferative index values. And if you um, look at a Kaplan-Meier analysis and bin patients who were either high expressors of RELIN or who were low expressors or had these protein-altering mutations, you can see that there are different survival outcomes between those groups. So in summary, what I've shown you today is that we identified two groups of cancers based on their survival association with cell proliferation, those um, where it seems to be informative and those where it doesn't. Um, I showed you our predictive modeling of patient survival across the proliferative informative cancers. Um, and we think, um, as was pointed out in the Venet et al. cancer, though we would say that especially in PICs, future prognostic modeling should be very cognizant of the significant role of proliferation-associated gene expression in cancer specifically attributing biological function to these associated models. So to that end, we've made an R package proliferative index that has a few functions that will help you to calculate this in your data set and then do comparisons um, to um, uh, look for proliferative index association with gene expression modules in your own um, data set that you're interested in. Um, and then I also told you about our somatic mutation burden analysis and how that was associated with proliferative index across and within the majority of cancers. And um, you know, we see this as a potential mechanism for association with poor outcomes and heterogeneity. So this is continuing work in our group. Um, in particular, these are kind of the areas that we're focused on, and there's more information about some of these in the bioarchive preprint. Um, so we're really interested in looking at drug sensitivity, so identifying chemotherapies with efficacy correlated with proliferative index and drugs capable of inhibiting proliferation across um, or associated expression. So if you have cancers where you know that survival is strongly linked to um, cell proliferation, then we think by exploring this further um, using the cancer cell line encyclopedia and connectivity map data sets that we might be able to better link up drugs with particular cancers or particular patients. Um, we're really interested in these non-PICs, so in these seven cancers, um, the proliferative index is really important. What's going on in the other 12? That's something that we're working on, trying to figure out what are these cell programs that are associated with patient survival in the non-PICs. Um, RELIN, very interesting gene. It's mostly been studied in a neural context. Um, there's some strong hints in the literature that the mechanism uh, might make sense in um, breast cancer, so we're um, working on uh, some wet work in the lab to follow that up. And then um, further proliferative index R package development, getting it up on CRAN, um, and um, adding some additional functions um, to help uh, users in the community explore that more. So again, I encourage you to take a look at our preprints. And uh, again, a big thank you to everyone else on the team. Um, 